everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the rainbow thermal beanie, which you can see here in front of you. This is a beautifully textured crochet beanie with several stripes of color. It's also quite thick as well because it's worked in this wonderful stitch called the thermal stitch. It does take a little bit longer to work because of the way that the thermal stitch wor works, but it is totally worth it. So the size we're going to do is an, an adult size. It's about uh, 20 to 21 inch circumference. And I'll give you instructions on how to adjust the size later on in this video. For this crochet pattern, you're going to need some worsted weight yarn. I am using the Lion Brand Heartland yarn, which is an acrylic worsted weight. Uh, and you're going to need five colors in total if you'd like to work it as I have here. First, you're going to need about half a ball, so about 125 yards of your color A. And uh, then about 50 yards or less of each of your colors B, C, D, and E. So I've used in my pattern, uh, this first one is the dried Tortugas, the purple color, which is the Quebec Valley, and then a blue one, and then a gold color, and a green. So again, you can switch up the colors and the stripes as well. So for this pattern, you're going to need the yarn as well as a five millimeter crochet hook, and then a copy of the written pattern, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. You're also going to need a stitch marker for this pattern, just because it makes it work up a lot more easily. There's direct links to each of the items in the description of this video. While you're here, I invite you to take a look around. Feel free to subscribe. There's many other crochet beanie patterns on this channel. Our pattern today is worked in rounds. So you're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working your foundation chain. And your foundation chain needs to be a multiple of five chains. Today we're going to chain a total of 85. But if you would like to change the size of your beanie, change this chain in uh, multiples of five stitches. For the adult size, simply chain 85. At the end, you're going to, without twisting your chain, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. So once you have chained 85 without twisting, go and join in that first stitch. I should also mention if you are changing the size of your beanie, uh, you'll want to work that initial foundation chain a little bit larger because as you work into the brim and the hat, the stitches are fairly tight, so it does make your foundation chain a lot shorter. So I'd recommend actually making it one to two inches uh, longer than the desired size. So join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and chain one. We're now going to work in the back loop only of our chain and work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So start with the same stitch as joining. That back loop is the loop that is furthest away from you. Insert your hook under that one only, single crochet, and then single crochet under the back loop only of each stitch all the way around. When you come to the beginning, I'm going to show you how to mark your stitches to make it easier to see the first and the last stitch. And uh, we'll continue working from there. When you come all the way around, 
you'll want to take your stitch marker. Now when you're working the thermal stitch, this first stitch often gets pulled a little bit tightly and it makes it hard to see when you come back around, uh, meaning you risk losing stitches as you're working. So in order uh, to keep that stitch and not lose it, you're going to take your stitch marker, insert it through the front loop only of the upper stitch and the front loop of that chain, foundation chain down below. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for this row. You're around. Then you're going to join under both loops into that first stitch. Chain one, and we're going to turn. Now for these early rows, when you turn your work, if you would like to make it a little easier, I just turn it vertical. So I'm not technically turning it backward. I'm just turning it vertical because I still want to be able to see these front stitches. To work the thermal stitch, we're going to be working under the, they would be the back loops if I had turned it, but right now they're facing me. So you're going to be working under these back loops of the row that you just worked or the round you just worked and the round below. So here we have our foundation chain and I have that back loop exposed. So I'm going to insert my hook through the back loop only of the next stitch and then extend my hook down and also insert it under the back loop only of that foundation chain. So it's going under those two loops. You can then yarn over and complete the stitch like a single crochet. You're going to work those stitches all the way around making sure that you're always lining up the two back loops. So insert your hook again under the next back loop and the one down below yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Continue that working these thermal stitches all the way around until you come to your first stitch. At the end of round two, You've come all the way around working your thermal stitches. Once again, make sure that the brim is not twisted. It is very easy to twist it in these early rounds. So once you've come all the way around, you've worked in your final stitch that you had marked, you can remove that stitch marker, go to the first stitch there in that round, and mark it just the same way again. So through the back loop only, or the front loop, as it, you see it now. So front loop of the round below and then the round two rounds below and just mark that stitch. Then join with a slip stitch under both loops of that first stitch. Chain one and turn. You are now going to work four more rounds. So this is rounds three four, five, and six, rounds three to six, and you're going to work rounds of thermal stitches exactly the same way through that back loop only of the previous round, and then the round two rounds below. Work thermal stitches all the way around, mark the first stitch, join with the slip stitch into that first stitch, chain one, and turn. In your final st stitch of round six, we're going to be changing to our color B. Once you come to the end of round six, I have my final stitch here yet to be worked. At the end of round six, you'll want to switch to your color B. So to switch to your color B, you're going to insert your hook into that next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. I'm still with my color A. But then you're going to drop your color A, pick up your color B, 
place it on your hook, yarn over and pull through. At this time, you can fasten off that color A, leaving a little bit of a long tail that you can weave in later if you would like. Uh, I found it's best not to carry the color up the side as sometimes you normally would. It uh, just doesn't create as nice of a seam when you do that. Uh, also, if you weave in the ends as you go and fasten off at the end of each color change, the beanie can then be reversible, which is kind of fun. So once you have your color B here, you can remove your stitch marker, mark your first stitch, and using your color B, join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. Chain one, turn your work. Now with your color B, you are going to work six more rounds of thermal stitch joining at the end of each round, chaining one and turning. So six rounds in your color B. I'll bring up my beanie here for you and just show you. So you're going to do the six rounds in color B, then continue working. You're going to work two rounds in color A, six more rounds in color C, two rounds in color A, six rounds in color, uh, what, what are we on, D, <laughs> and two rounds in color A, six more rounds in color uh, E. You're then going to work 10 more rounds of your color A. Then we'll start the decrease in the hat, and that's where I'm going to pick up here in just a second. If you have trouble remembering all that, head over to richtexturescrochet.com, uh, grab that free written copy, and uh, it will explain all of the color changes. So go ahead and work up to round 46. So that's after your 10th round of color A. Meet me back here and we'll start the decrease of our beanie. Once you've worked to the end of round 46, this is what your beanie will look like from the bottom up to the top. You're then ready to begin your decrease rounds. So at the end of round 46, we're going to continue working in our color A Again, if you've changed the size of your beanie, uh, you're not going to want to work to this height, but you can find a hat sizing chart online and work your beanie to the desired height before starting your decrease rounds. And you should be able to, as long as you've changed your multiples in multiples of five, you should be able just to work these decrease rounds in the exact same way as I'm going to here. So chain one, turn your work, and you're going to begin round one of the decrease by working a thermal stitch into your first stitch and each of the next two stitches. So working three thermal stitches all together. Next, work a thermal stitch two together. To work your thermal stitch two together, working through those back loop only, insert your hook through the first stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, then again through the back loop only, insert your hook through the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. That's your thermal stitch two together. In a little bit, I'm going to show you how to work an alternate thermal stitch two together, which you will use in the next round. So you're then going to repeat thermal stitch in each of the next three stitches. and thermal stitch two together. 
For the thermal stitch two together, again, I'm working through both of those back loops, the last round and two rounds, working through both of those loops. So repeat that all the way around, thermal stitch in each of the next three stitches, followed by a thermal stitch two together, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. At the end of the round one of the decrease, you've chained one, you're going to turn your work. Now for round two, we're going to work that stitch I mentioned before, an alternate thermal stitch two together. And this is a little bit of a stitch I made up in order to work the decrease stitches. Because when you work your thermal stitch two together on the one side, you end up with one less stitch each time you do that decrease on the previous round versus the round two rounds below. So when you work this second round, you need to even up the number of stitches. And you can kind of see it here. You have one in your last decrease stitch. You have one stitch up here, but it's resting over top of two stitches. So in order to even that out and make it lay flat, you're going to work the alternate thermal stitch two together. To work it, you're going to insert your hook through the back loop only of that, that next stitch in the previous round and into the back loop only of the first stitch in the round two rounds below. Yarn over, draw up a loop. Now you still have that extra stitch in that round two rounds below. So you're then going to insert your hook only in that back loop of the next stitch two rounds below. So under one loop, yarn over, draw up a loop. Three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three. That's the alternate thermal stitch two together. You now have the same number of stitches in the previous round as you do the round below. You're then going to work one thermal stitch in each of the next three stitches. There's one, two, and three followed by an alternate thermal stitch two together. And once again, if you take a look at your stitch, you see how they have a stitch up top here, and it's over top of two stitches down below. So you want to even it out, insert your hook through the back loop only of that top stitch, and the back loop only of the next stitch down below, yarn over and drop a loop, then insert your hook, under the back loop only of the next stitch down below like two rows below yarn over draw up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three once again you've evened up the number of stitches you're going to repeat that all the way around one thermal stitch in each of the next three stitches followed by an alternate thermal stitch two together in the next stitch. All the way around, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. At the end of round two, you've chained one and turned your work. For round three, now all of your stitches are even on the top and the bottom, so we're just going to work a thermal stitch into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way around. When you're done, mark the first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch, chain one and turn your work. At the end of round three, join with a slip stitch, chain one, turn your work. For round four, we're going to work another decrease round. This time, 
thermal stitch in the first stitch and in the next stitch so for a total of two then thermal stitch two together so this time we're working under the back loops only of both rounds the previous and the one before then repeat that all the way around thermal stitch in each of the next two stitches followed by a thermal stitch two together repeat that all the way around join with a slip stitch into that first stitch chain one and turn your work for round five of the decrease chained one and turned your work. You're now going to begin by working an alternate thermal stitch two together in that first stitch and a half followed by a thermal stitch two, uh, a thermal stitch in each of the next two stitches. Repeat that alternate thermal stitch two together followed by a thermal stitch in each of the next two stitches repeat it all the way around and join with a slip stitch into that first stitch chain one and turn your work for round six chained one turned your work you're going to thermal stitch in that first stitch and then in each stitch all the way around join with the slip stitch into that first stitch chain one and turn your work for round seven thermal stitch into that first stitch followed by a thermal stitch two together in the next stitch thermal stitch into the next stitch and thermal stitch two together into the next repeat that all the way around until you're back to your first stitch and join with the slip stitch into that stitch chain one and turn your work For round eight, work an alternate thermal stitch two together. Followed by a thermal stitch in the next stitch repeat that all the way around alternate thermal stitch two together followed by a thermal stitch in the next stitch all the way around and then join with a slip stitch into your first stitch for round nine thermal stitch into that first stitch and then thermal stitch into each stitch all the way around. Once you're back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. For round 10, you're going to work a thermal stitch two together all the way around. So thermal stitch two together all the way around. When you come to that first stitch, join with a slip stitch, chain one, and turn your work. Then you will have probably guessed it, but your round 11 you're going to do an alternate thermal stitch 
two together all the way around. And then for round 12, do a thermal stitch to, to uh, uh, sorry, a thermal stitch in each stitch all the way around. So I'm going to leave you to do those three rounds, the thermal stitch two together, alternate thermal stitch two together, followed by a thermal stitch round, and then meet me back here at the end of round 12. So at the end of your round 12, you're going to work one final round. Round 13 is a thermal stitch, two together over each stitch all the way around. So just a regular thermal stitch, two together. The hole at the top of your hat should have gotten quite a bit smaller. Sorry. Once you come all the way around, you'll have one thermal stitch left over. Simply work a thermal stitch in that final stitch. You can then remove your stitch marker and join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. Then fasten off, leaving a little bit of a long tail. You're going to use the top of that tail to sew the top of your beanie closed. To sew the top of your beanie closed, I like to turn it uh, inside out you're then going to take your needle and just around the top of the hat weave the yarn in a, and out around those top stitches just like so all the way around. Once you come around, you can simply pull it closed to tighten the top of your hat. You may wish to work a little bit of a knot to make sure that it doesn't come out later on. You can then weave in that end. Turn your beanie back right side out. If you wish, add a pom-pom to the top. Weave in any final ends that might be sticking out. And your rainbow thermal beanie is complete. So thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to make the rainbow thermal beanie. Once again, I invite you to take a look around and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.